So we're gonna say, there's the 50. So this will go into our account. Let's choose an account and we're gonna put it into the cash clearing account. I should put an account number on it, but the cash clearing account. So it's gonna go into the clearing account at 150. So if I deposit it, uh, it wants a reference. I'll just put a D for deposit. All right, boom, 150. So now if I go into my, my balance sheet and update, now we've got in the clearing account, uh, uh, the cash clearing account, the 150, nothing's yet in the checking account and the accounts receivable went back down. So AR goes back down. If I go into the A to the R, R, R matey, we've got, uh, this goes back down and the 50, okay. And then, and so, so now the AR went down and we put it into the clearing account and you can see it went into the clearing account, not as 100 and 150, but just as $50. So again, if, if that was the only thing that you needed to do, then you could have just, we could have just deposited this uh, directly into, the, actually it went in here at uh, one, at 100 and 150. So it's in here as two separate transactions. So this might still be useful here because <laughs> now we're gonna, do, we're gonna transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account. And we're gonna do that with, uh, with one deposit. So then it'll go into the checking account as just one lump sum amount, which is what we want to see because that's gonna be easiest to connect to the bank feeds. All right, so let's go back and now I'm gonna do a transfer. I'm gonna go back to the first tab and I'm gonna imagine that I know that that 150 is now gonna be grouped together when it hits the bank account, right? So that's what that's the system what I have to figure out. Now notice that if you have fees and stuff involved as well, then you can also find different systems to use the clearing account to also help you to kind of figure out the fees and how you're gonna deal with the fees with uh, payment processors, which is often an issue if you have like online shops, like a Shopify or Amazon or something like that. There are different systems you can put in place that uh, that sometimes have to deal with the fees, but anytime you deal with a, a PayPal's and the, and the Stripes, those intermediary, the credit card companies, fees can come into play as well. And a clearing account can help you put a, a system to deal with the fees. All right, but in any case, I'm gonna go to the first tab and I'm just gonna go to the transfer now i'm going to make a transfer now i could use a deposit form because i'm depositing into the checking account but when i use a deposit form it will actually show a deposit in the clearing account that is decreasing the clearing account which is like a cash account so that looks a little funny so but you could do that because everything is going into the the checking account but i'm going to use the transfer form because the transfer doesn't look funny on either side, right? Because the transfer could mean a decrease to the to the cash account or an increase to the cash account. So I'm gonna say it's coming out of the, the clearing account and it's going into the checking account. Let's do this on uh, October, October, to, let's go uh, 2022, uh, October, and okay and then we're gonna say let's just say the seventh and it's gonna be for 150 reference deposit all right let's transfer it and then if i go back to the balance sheet and update we've got the clearing account goes away because it's back down to zero checking account has the 150 in it but not two separate transactions for 150, instead having just one 150, 150 right there. So 150, I thought 150 meant a dollar and 50 cents. 50 means 50 cents, doesn't it? Whatever, dude, 150, you can say it for either 150 or a dollar and 50 cents. It's 150, man. Okay, so we're gonna go into the checking account. Let's go back into the bank accounts and then uh, drop down here. Let's go into the account transactions 
and see if the system matched it out now. So I'm going to go into reconcile and look for that 150 and see if zero picked it up as a match. And you can see it did now, right? So now zero was able to recognize zero was able to recognize the 150. You better recognize 150. That's right. Uh, so there we have it. So zero recognized it now. So now, so but now when I add it, all it's doing is reconciling. It's not going to add anything new to the. Uh, it's not going to add anything new to the transactions. So we'll just reconcile. That helps us out with our bank reconciliation. So nothing new happening to the financial statements here, but still important to do because it helps us with that reconciliation process. We still want to do bank reconciliations, by the way, just to make sure I would still, you know, process a bank rec, which they have a nice report. Zero does. We'll look at it later. Uh, but that's that. Let's let's see how our financial statements have been constructed thus far. Tabbing uh, another tab open so I can open the trial balance. You better recognize 150, man. 150. I'm inflation. I used to be fitty. I used to be just fitty, but now I'm 150 because of infl report reports. Okay. Okay. Focus. Trial balance. And then we're gonna go. Uh, there. Okay. So so here's what we have it. So we can see that this is just the balance sheet on top of the income statement and we're just constructing this thing as we go the income statement stopping or the balance sheet stopping at retained earnings income statement below that so that debits equal the credits is the same thing as saying that our assets equal our liabilities and our equity the income statement is part of equity because it's being squished together in this one number of uh uh, the current year earnings, which is the bottom line of the income statement, 760954, 760954. On the trial balance, we're not grouping that in there into the equity, which is going to eventually go into retained earnings. This is the prior year equity, and then the current activity is broken out in the income statement format accounts.